Howdy guys, my fellow 8, your favorite wolf girl enthusiast, and welcome to my Fire Emblem, The Binding Blade, Iron Man Randomizer, with 10% crit on all the weapons. Indeed, it's been a very long time. How you guys doing? I haven't got to do much recently, but I'm very much happy to be back with another Iron Man Randomizer, with 10% crit on all the weapons, of course. Uh, if you don't know what a randomizer is, or if you've never played this game before, this is Fire Emblem 6, The Binding Blade, Roy's game, of course, and a randomizer essentially takes all of your unit's classes in a Fire Emblem game and randomizes them. Uh, some randomizers like to uh, shift around the characters as well, but I'm not doing that this time. The characters are still the characters, they're just going to have different classes this time around. Uh, sort of lets me keep things a lot more easily in mind, so to say. Especially with one of the challenges that I'm going to introduce here momentarily. Um, but as you may know, if you've seen my channel before, if you've watched previous Let's Plays, we're going to be playing this one with 10% additional crit on every single weapon. Iron swords, iron lances, everything. I don't care a halberd, a hammer, whatever. Everything has 10% crit, and anything that had crit originally just has 10% added. So killing edges, woedows, just 10 more crit straight across the board, and it should be a very fun... It should be a very fun time. <laughs> Okay, so this is a randomizer, as I said. All of the classes are different, and we have some very interesting units here before us today. Now, I was aware of Roy and Marcus's classes prior to this, just because I got unfortunately spoiled whenever I went to add the crit to all the weapons, but I was not expecting what, we're, uh, what we have before us here today. Um, yeah, let me just go ahead and, and hop over onto one of these units really quickly. I just want to show you the 10% crit is there. It's fully functional. Every single weapon, doesn't matter what it is, steel axe, whatever. 10% crit, otherwise completely vanilla experience. The, the bosses are not changed. The units, the enemies are not changed. Just our characters. And uh, I suppose without further ado, we should get into it. So it appears that our lord, this time around, our young boy Roy, happened to reclass into a Pegasus Knight. Now that is pretty tremendous. Uh, I should add, whenever I go into his class, the rapier has been um, swapped around to a lance just for the sake of him being able to use a rapier type weapon. It very much helps, I'll say, and he starts with a javelin and his sea spear. Uh, it is otherwise a typical rapier. It has all the same stats minus the additional 10% crit, of course, and then the javelin with 10% crit as well. Uh, now in like FE8 or FE7, a javelin with 10% crit would be insane, but in this game it has much lower hit rate, so it may not always be the best weapon, especially on Roy as a Pegasus Knight, with its 11 weight and his 7, no, his 5 con, his 5 con, uh, and his 8 strength, surprisingly. Now, the stats and the growths are not randomized uh, for the most part. The, the stats have a lean of up or down 3 points, and otherwise the growth rates are the same. So if you know the growth rates in this game, if you know how units are supposed to grow, that's how they're going to grow for the most part. Uh, it does appear that Roy has the male aid um, for Pegasus Knights somehow, so he's actually going to be a fantastic rescuer uh, in addition to his 7 move and his very, very good Dark Affinity. Uh, dark Affinity in this one is really good. Uh, if you don't know about Affinities, they add stat bonuses as you build supports with the units around you, and in this particular instance, a Dark Affinity will give him Hit Rate, Avoid, Crit, and Crit Avoid. All of these stats are incredibly valuable, especially Crit Avoid, because of the 10% Crit. So we're going to be having a very much fun time with that. And then, of course, I already knew about Marcus, so I'll go ahead and show him to you. He comes with a Killing Edge, as you can see with its 40% Crit, and he's a great lord. He's basically just promoted Roy, so if we, uh, those are pretty good stats, actually. Um, not bad at all. Uh, if we ever come across, like, uh, another Rapier or a Binding Blade, he's the guy who uses it. He's the one who has access to that weapon, so hopefully we run across a Binding Blade, um, because all of the villages and all of the chests are also randomized in this particular run. We might just happen to pick up a Binding Blade somewhere, and if we do, this is the guy for it. With his 8 strength, 11 speed, 11 defense, and 9 res, he's no slouch, he's going to be here for a while. The only thing weighing him down, so to say, is his 8 constitution, but in this case, he's not weighed down by the Killing Edge, or by most swords in this game, so we're, we're chilling on that front. Now, where do we start beyond that? I believe we have to go with Wolt. I can't believe it's Wolt, of all people, who wound up being our bard. He's going to be a very poor bard, but nonetheless, he is a bard. Uh, with a Thunder Affinity. I can deal with that. That's really good, actually. Uh, but, you know, his stats don't super matter. He's a bard. He's your refresh unit. He gives you additional movements with your other units. 
And this should be very fun. This also opens up the, the possibility for early game dancer chains should we get a dancer class, because the dancer class is also randomized in the mix alongside the bard class, so we could wind up getting a dancer train in that regard. Uh, but the reason he's not going to be a particularly good bard is because he doesn't have great speed, he doesn't have good defense, he doesn't have good res, his HP is kind of mid. His HP is probably his best stat overall um, in terms of his growth rate for it, but he's going to have a hard time dodging things, and thus he's going to have a hard time surviving uh, with his low HP base and his non-existent defense and res bases. He's going to have a hard time. We have to keep him even safer than we would any other dancer. But now we have some very uh, interesting units otherwise. You don't usually start this game with mages, so here's Boars, the Thunder Mage. Thunder has 15 crit in this game, so it's, it's really good. I just had a huge revelation about this character. So, Boars is your, your typical armor knight in his growth rates. He has pretty good strength, pretty good defense, but in terms of growth rates, his speed is not that bad. It's like 30% or something. So he could be the miraculous defense mage that we've all always wanted. A defense mage in Fire Emblem is insane because they deal huge damage to typically uh, defensive or res resistancely, resistancely, resistance unheavy units, so to say. Uh, and he's got good defense, so he can survive a lot of things. He's also got really high HP, so this guy is going to be really good. Uh, there's pretty much no question about it that Boris is going to go hard. Then we have Alan with his Thunder Affinity as well. Uh, Alan, one of my favorite characters in this game for sure, but with his low skill and two halberds, which have really low accuracy, he's going to be struggling for a while. Um, he has, as you can see at the bottom, 58% hit rate, so that's going to be rough. Uh, him, and, him and Lance gonna be having a hard time it would very much appear um their base stats are not that good well actually no alan alan's pretty okay he has 11 cons so he's getting weighed down by most axes but his speed's decent uh he could grow into it alan is a shaman with the wind affinity is actually really solid that gives attack crit and crit avoid some of my favorite things for sure uh and tomes aren't that heavy in this game so he might actually be decent i guess we'll see i guess we'll see very much so indeed but anyway time to actually get into the gameplay um i guess we're just going to start the typical way except this time we have the uh, distinct ability to dance a unit in the very early game i'm gonna do green i like green for this particular playthrough I'm gonna go ahead and let's see all these wonderful palettes that's gonna be one thing that we're gonna see a lot of is new palettes for units looking wonderful both of these units are uh, and the colors are really good because we're using the Yune randomizer this this is good I like this very much so one two three four five okay so as long as I stand here we're completely safe with Marcus Marcus could just like super die like absolutely he could um, but he would have to get crit like twice and then also not dodge anything so that's what I'm banking on right now hmm Otherwise, this is a pretty horrible map for our boy Roy, because uh, these are all axe units minus some archers, which are additionally not very good for a Pegasus Knight Lord. Let's see, it's been quite a while since I've played some GBA Fire Emblem, so I'm gonna have to... He had the horse sound effect, that's wonderful. Uh, I'm gonna have to get used to not using, um, like, the engage and three houses, uh, what would you say, like, danger range. Feature. I, I very much got used to that, because that's the most Fire Emblem that I've played in the past few months. I'm gonna move these guys up here. I don't necessarily not trust them, it's just that I completely don't trust them. <laughs> that's the only issue with them. Uh, but otherwise, Boris can stand right here. Maybe he'll bait this guy, and we'll get to see probably what's going to be another Banana Mage, if you may recall, um, with regard to Lou, the typical mage that you get in this game. But yeah, we're gonna be seeing some crits in this run. A lot of them, no doubt about that. Maybe not first thing, but we're going to be seeing a lot of them, and it's going to be a very much fun time. Now, if you're here for a story playthrough, I am sorry, I'm not going to be reading the story this run. Uh, I wanted something that was going to... There we go. There we go. That's what I like to see. Uh, I wanted to do something more laid back, something I could potentially just come home and record after work if I have a spare hour. Because uh, that's been my biggest issue, is I really want to get back into... Oh, actually, Boars looks amazing like that. That is a fantastic palette for him. Um... But yeah, I've been wanting to get back into recording, and I've been wanting to get back into Fire Emblem Illuminated specifically, uh, if you recall, from quite some time ago. Uh, but I've been perfectly unable to, just on account of work and the fact that Reading Story is actually the... This is a wonderful palette for him. Uh, reading Story is actually the most difficult thing for me when it comes to recording. 
Uh, it's just not the easiest thing to, to have to do. So I wanted something that I wouldn't have to read the story in specifically. Uh, ideally so that I can just come home and crunch episodes as I, as I have time. Uh, and in this instance, it's purely a gameplay thing with a lot of risk and a lot of reward. But nonetheless, I hope that is perfectly okay. I very much do. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to have to get a feel for everybody's constitution because I'm going to be doing a lot of rescuing. Uh, if you know me, you know that I love to rescue units and I love to play around with rescue strats and stuff like that. Very much enrich my gameplay in this regard. Boars is killing it, uh, but I'm going to have to get used to that so that I know who can rescue who. I'm a little bit more used to shamans being bulkier just on account of Noel and Kanas from FE8 and 7 respectively, but in this game, mages generally don't have a need for constitution on account of their books, their tomes being pretty lightweight. Uh, one thing that I actually do quite enjoy about this game in truth. Uh, let's see, so are you going to get doubled? You're not. If I could certainly kill that guy, I'd be more willing to go for this. The, the biggest issue is that I can't allow Roy to be in range of this unit because I can actually show you the damage forecast. It ain't pretty. <laughs> he super dies. Uh, and that's not what we're after. Not, not in any way whatsoever. Uh, I will say this village down here, though, it's not randomized. Any villages and chests that would give money, they're not randomized. Just the item giving ones. So we're just going to feed a bunch of experience into Marcus because he's the only one who's capable of doing stuff right now. Uh, which, you know, probably going to come back to bite me later, because this is a pretty difficult game, and Marcus is not necessarily known for his uh, abilities to, you know, necessarily remain super functional in the late game. Uh, in terms of supports, though, Dark Affinity is great. I think him and Roy both have Dark Affinity, so that would be a pretty insane overlap. I had originally kind of intended to just do a vanilla playthrough of this game, and if I had done so, uh, I actually had a strat in mind for the boy Walt, but I'm not going to be using it this time because he's a bard. That strat very much involved him dying, so maybe he got lucky in this way. Maybe he got tremendously and unforeseeably lucky, and he's perfectly capable of doing anything that I need him to. Uh, can't really go wrong with the bard after all. Really one of the coolest classes in Fire Emblem. Uh, this might be a good chance to give something to Roy. There's like no way he hits, but if he were to hit, it would be really funny. And in truth, comedy is what makes up 90% of my desire to play Fire Emblem. Um, yeah, I'm just going to kill Edge this guy. I'm not in the business of saving weapons if it can get me guaranteed kills, stuff that I very much need to occur, in this instance for sure anyway. Now, the only thing that's a, a little bit risky about this is that I'm now going to have three attempts at hitting this guy from two range. That's a pretty cool palette and a very nice hit, to be sure. Um, but yeah, I was going to say... I was going to have three attempts to hit that guy. I got insanely lucky by hitting a 41, by the way. This is a 2RN game, which means that 41% just doesn't hit. That's not actually real. Um, as a matter of fact, I would say this is the part at which you should begin to doubt <laughs> that I'm playing fairly. Uh, no, not at all. But ideally, we, uh, we hit those, we take those. I should have taken the chance to trade Marcus off the Killing Edge, because he didn't need to do that. But he's a murderer, cold-blooded. I guess it was abandoned after all, so that makes sense. But that's perfectly okay. Let's see, he is actually pretty capable with regard to weakening units. It just so happens that the units that are backing him up are not super capable. Uh, this guy is getting weighed down by four points by his halberd, which is the only axe that he has access to. Access to, as it were. Um, so he's not doing too good. He's got two speed. These guys have six and seven, so they're literally just one rounding him. Unquestionably one rounding him. And uh, that's unfortunate. That's unlucky. Let's see, I can go ahead and get that village over there with the Roy. The Roy, whose first game was Smash Brothers Melee. Let's go ahead. I'm a, I'm gonna go go ahead and turn off the bard animation just so that we don't have to see it every single time. As beautiful as Wolt is, um, we're gonna go without it. It is very nice to have pegs this night though. I think I know why it's doing the Cavalier sound effect. I think he's specifically randomized into a male Pegasus Knight, not on account of his uh, default gender, because that's not actually something that's part of any of this in a typical typical playthrough. The classes are gendered, not so much the characters. Uh, but let's 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 visit this house. I think this is the money house. No, it's not the money house. If we happen across the money house, we should we should definitely read that one because it's a, a a vital necessity in any single playthrough of this game. If you don't read the dialogue in the money house, well, you're not playing the game right. If you don't know about money, then 
how are you supposed to beat Fire Emblem? I don't, I don't even know if that's possible. Okay, just a quick cut in here. I actually forgot to do the Money House reading, so let it be known that despite my cut in here, my playthrough is doomed. I didn't read the Money House, so I guess, I guess the playthrough that you're watching is about to be ruined in some way or another. I guess you'll see how that'll be, but we have to read the Money House. It's vitally important, and in the good spirit of the money man, I'm going to be giving this my absolute best Mr. Krabs impression. So, let's go ahead and read the money dialogue. Money is vital for any army. If you don't have any, you won't be able to replace your broken weapons. And you can't fight without weapons. There we go. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of my Mr. Krabs impression. Marcus has been getting hit by a surprising amount of these. I'm very much glad he hasn't been crit by any of them, because I, I don't think I actually have any healing items. At least none that I recall. Uh, if I do, then that's cool. Okay, I, I do have a lot of healing items, actually. I was lying to myself almost entirely. <laughs> so, that's, that's okay. We'll roll with this. Another 42! Now's the part where you start doubting whether I'm playing the game fairly. Because uh, that doesn't happen. That's not real. You're going to be seeing a lot of wacky hit rates over here. I, I, My Fire Emblem experience with hit rates is just abysmal. I'm the same guy who missed a 99 in an Iron Man playthrough. I, I've hit some ridiculous hit rates, and I've hit some... I've missed a lot of ridiculous hit rates. So we're going to be seeing uh, a lot of good fun in that regard. He keeps getting hit. He keeps getting hit by 37s and below. It, to be fair, it is going to happen more often with the enemies because their hit rates are going to be low, but that's still kind of wild. Uh, let's see, if if he's got 18... Okay, well, on a forest, Marcus can't die even to a crit, even though he's quite banged up. Uh, he'll be more than fine. I shouldn't have just committed that movement, but I feel... Okay, alright, another 42% and this time a crit. I think you know what I have to say about that, so we're gonna, we're, we're just gonna carry on. We're just gonna carry on. I must have a button on my controller that's just like the automatic hit button. I'm gonna do that for the, uh, the, uh, I'm gonna make sure to try to dance every single turn that I can for you, Roa, because I know, I know that you don't like, ooh, he could have died there, uh, that you want me to get the dancer experience where at all possible. And to be fair, Wolt is one of those characters that, like, in some insane, wacky, case i could just level him to 20 in this chapter if i were willing to to sit here and waste like a million turns doing that and then we'd have a pretty insane unit on our hands now let's see about this one there's no way there's no way i listen i swear i'm not doing anything okay well that was a good level up but i don't know how that's happened four of them Okay, all right, cool. Sure. Great. I, I'm so good at this game that my strategy is just flawless every single time it works. If you know Fire Emblem GBA, you know that like sub 50% hit rates are un unbelievably unlikely. I should honestly pull up the chart with 2RN just to show you how unlikely that is because I think it's like 30% or less or something and we've hit what, four in a row after missing one? Did we even miss one? I can't remember. We might have hit every single one of them, but who knows. It's it's wild. Absolutely the Wild West out here. And that's fine with me. I mean, that's some good experience for Roy. He better not do it again. He's not going to now. Now that I've made a big deal out of it, he's not going to. Right? There's no way he could. Okay. All right. See? See? I actually... I'm capable of missing 40%. So, that's cool, I guess. Uh, it seems that we're just gonna have to kill this guy with magic from afar. Uh, either that or dance for Roy so that he can, he can have an additional chance at hitting. Uh, the good old flux animation. Gonna be really, really slow in this game, that's for sure. Oh boy. Well, he doesn't get one-rounded. Somehow. Some way. I don't really know how. But he doesn't. I... I am pretty tempted to, to dance Roy, but I shouldn't. I'm going to go ahead and let Bors have this murder. Let him have the kill. I think that Bors is going to be insanely valuable. Uh, did I check his affinity? Do I... Okay, Thunder affinity. That one does give crit avoid. It also gives defense. And it gives crit. So he's kind of insane. Um, 
Who does Boar support with again, though? That's a pretty limited pool overall. I know he supports with Barth and Wendy. They're gonna be a, a trip, to say the very least. I don't know if I'm gonna be using them. Let's see, so 12. Okay, he takes one damage. He can't die. He can't. It's not possible. Why isn't it possible? He. It's just not. He's not capable of death in this instance, so we'll, we'll go with that. I'm gonna try to surround the archer and hopefully get a kill for um, our homie Alan over there. I would very much love for him to be able to get a kill. Also, I just noticed that Roy's dealing like 10 and 9 damage to these guys. That's kind of insane for a Pegasus Knight. You don't typically get to see something like that, but I'm very much happy with it. There, There's no doubt about that. Let's see, and the boss doesn't move, so I don't have to worry about that. Is it just that they have low defense? No, he's just pretty good, actually. That's cool. I don't typically have Pegasus Knights with more than, like, 5 strength for the whole game. I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I swear I didn't plan it. I, there's no way that he's capable of this. But I guess he is. I mean, that's just how it's going to have to be, I guess. Okay. Oh, wow, that's a real... 44. We're just hitting everything today. That's a really good palette, though. I really like that one a lot. He looks like a typical enemy fighter with his red, um, what is that? Like a, not, not quite a tunic, just like a battle outfit of some kind. I guess I could just put, put down Roy here and let him pretend as though hit rates are a thing that actually exists. Mm, I don't know. Do I want to use Lance or Alan more? They're not really good at supporting each other. Their, their affinities kind of offset each other. Uh, a little bit. Not not exactly the greatest. I'm just gonna let him stand here. I think I need to give this one to Alan. I think I need Alan to have just a little bit more fun in his life. Um, he's going to exhaust my patience quickly, and by quickly I mean instantly. He had his second chance, and thus no more, if Lance is capable of hitting after all. That'll be just fine. Uh, I might give the boss experience over to Boars. I think he's extremely capable of, uh, using that experience. If I can get strength... Whew, yep. I think Boars is the long-term solution to this game. I think Boars is going to be going hard in this in this playthrough, uh, especially if he can get some strength. If he can get strength and speed, he's just going insane. Well, HP skill is not the play, but that's perfectly okay. What, he can seize? I was, I was just, I was just kidding whenever I did that. I was, I was literally about to make a joke about how he can't seize, but... Alright, I guess. I mean... Okay, you, sure, Marcus, go right for it, my guy. That... Hats off to you, friend. That's wild. Okay. Um... As you can see, this is going to be a very fun playthrough, and I hope you'll join me for the very next episode as we cha tackle Chapter 2. I would do a two-parter, but this one's already been a long one, as we had a lot of unit reviews early on. That was a lot of fun. I hope you're as excited for this one as I am. Uh, you better make sure to leave me some comments in the comment section below. Keep my motivation and my morale high so I can come home every day from work and record a brand new episode of the series. That is the threshold. You have to, you have to comment. If you don't... How will I know that you watched it? Unless you hit like, I guess. Maybe if you hit the like button, that'll be just fine. Um, but yeah, I, I very much hope you enjoy this one. Look forward to the next chapter. We're going to be getting five new units, if I recall correctly. Deke's entire crew, plus Ellen uh, and Merlinus, but he's not randomized. He's your convoy. You don't get to randomize him. It would be disastrous if you could. Uh, well, not necessarily, but it would be. So that's what we're going for. Uh, I guess that's about all there is to it. So far, no deaths. Uh, Make sure to let me know what you thought below, and until next time, I'll see you later.